Continuing debate with the Honourable Member for Provence. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's a privilege today to rise and speak to Bill C-50. Um, I've spoken to it before, and I sit on the Natural Resource Committee, so it's a bill that we did study there. We heard lots of testimony from different folks uh, from, uh, from all aspects of concern and support of the bill. And uh, I plan to use my time this uh, afternoon to make my case why this legislation is bad for Canadians and show the correlation between this bill and the carbon tax. So I'll address the legislation directly, but I'll take a bit of a roundabout way to get there and ask for a chair's indulgence to do that. Only this Liberal government would have the audacity to put forward this piece of legislation and call it a sustainable job plan. Bill C-50 is simply a rebranding of the Liberals' so-called just transition, a plan to shut down Canada's energy sector and move to what they claim will be a more green, sustainable and just economy. Well, you know, Mr. Speaker, they couldn't sell it under that name. Nobody was buying it. And so now, like a shifty used car salesman, they've slipped on a new coat of paint and jacked up the price. And it seems the Liberals' new approach to legislation is to title their bills by saying the exact opposite of what they're actually going to do. Because to date, the government has failed spectacularly at meeting one single environmental target. They love to talk about the environment, but their first act in office was to authorize the City of Montreal to dump 8 billion, 8 billion litres of raw sewage into the St. Lawrence River. 8 billion, Mr. Speaker. I think most Canadians would call that making pollution free again. Their promise to plant 2 billion trees never materialized. 2 billion trees over 10 years, they said. Now they've had 8 years. Time's nearly up. How many have they managed to plant? Well, what percent of those trees are in the ground after 8 years? 0.05 of 1%. Not even 1%, Mr. Speaker. They keep talking about this net zero. It's all over this bill. But this government has yet to meet a single emissions reduction target. They keep upping what they say they'll achieve when they haven't even met a single target of what they should have achieved. Again, they talk a big game, but they don't execute. Across the board, whether it's economy, immigration, getting a passport, or something as simple as sticking a sapling in the ground, they just can't get the job done. But if we're going to talk about the environment failures, we need to look no further than the carbon tax. The Liberal, NDP and now Bloc carbon tax continues to drive inflation and drive up the cost of living for struggling Canadians because the carbon tax is a tax on everything. The only thing it seems that remains unaffected by the Prime Minister's beloved carbon tax is the environment. That the carbon tax has made little to no difference to the environment should not surprise us. The whole thing is a scam. Another smoke and mirrors sales job, like their just transition to cover up this government's actual goal, their real agenda, the one thing that they have so, so far been successful at achieving. And that, Mr. Speaker, is the redistribution of wealth. That's what this carbon tax is all about. It's what a significant portion of their COVID policies were all about. And that's all that, that's, that this legislation is as well. A classical Marxist redistribution of wealth. Remember that day a while back when the Minister of the Environment got up in this House and he proudly proclaimed, I am a socialist, and all the Liberals around him applauded. It was shocking, Mr. Speaker. Not just because of the dark and bloody history associated with such regimes, but because a Liberal minister actually got up and told the truth about what they were doing. That's what this legislation is about. It's about government picking winners and losers based on a warped ideology and redistributing, redistributing wealth and opportunity to those that they deem worthy. As former General Rick Hillier put it just this week, ideology masking as leadership has killed the Canadian dream. And before they start to claim that some, that's, that that's some far-right mega conspiracy, I would point my colleagues to an excellent article written by Dr. Vijay Kalanjivedi. He's a postdoctoral fellow at the Institute of Development Policy in the University of Antwerp, an expert in social and economic ramifications of climate change. Dr. Colin Javadi is a firm believer that climate change is, is an existential threat. 
and he says, we Western governments are greening ourselves to extinction. And what he means by that, he makes a very convincing case for it, is the so-called green policies and this and other, of this and other Western governments, what he calls fake solutions, not only do nothing to stop climate change, but are in fact smoke and mirrors, a job to help governments and wealthy investors get even richer. And who are they going to get richer off? The backs of the middle class and the poorest, the most vulnerable people on our planet. That's what uh, we're greening ourselves to extinction is what he meant. And he's not alone, Mr. Speaker. There's a growing recognition across the political spectrum that what these governments are doing, what this government is doing with these policies is about wealth redistribution, not the environment. So how do they do it? They do it by destroying the middle class. How did they do that? Look no further than the effect of their COVID environmental policies have had on our economy in just the last three years. So can Canadians, particularly those who would be the most affected by this legislation, by Bill C-50, trust this government to transition them into a just and sustainable way? I think not. But you know what? I like to judge a person by what they do and not by what they say. And that brings me back to the carbon tax. Let's look at the three main government talking points about the carbon tax. The carbon tax is putting a price on pollution. False. Eight billion litres of raw sewage into the St. Lawrence. No price on pollution there. Carbon tax has made no demonstrable change to emissions and no targets have been met, nor will they be. Not from the carbon tax. Those on the political left say that the tax is too low to force people to modify their behaviour and complain that it leaves exemptions for large emitters, which it does. Those on the right are equally correct that taxing carbon in Canada is virtue signalling at best as Canada accounts for a mere 1.5% of global greenhouse gas, uh, gas emissions. You know, Mr. Speaker, that means if you'd shut down every single carbon-producing thing here in Canada, shut our whole economy down, we would make a whopping difference of 1.5% globally. And in questioning the sanity of ignoring actual pollution while taxing a life-enhancing element of the very air that we breathe, and now with Bill C-50, they want to spend billions more of taxpayers' dollars to shut down not only the largest private sector driver of our economy, but the largest private sector driver of green and renewable technology as well. The second thing, 8 out of 10 Canadian families will receive more money back in rebates than they paid in. Well, that's false. Rex Murphy pointed out in his excellent piece in the National Post, name a tax that makes the taxpayer richer. What a strange incentive that would be. Half of Canada would be upping the thermostat, putting the air conditioner on in winter, driving day and night to burn up more oil and gas so that they could get more back than they put in. As a PMO, as a PBO, thank you, has made it clear, you're not getting more money back. Hardly anyone is. In fact, by the time the tax is fully implemented in 2030, eight out of ten households will pay exponentially more. A fact even our ground our proud socialist environment minister has admitted. And because no tax makes the taxpayer richer, only the government, which leads to the third claim. And the third claim that they can say about the carbon tax is that it is revenue neutral. False. Even if we were to believe the principle of the taxes collected all goes to rebates, which makes no sense, the Liberals are charging GST on top of the carbon tax, and that goes directly into government coffers. And we've learned recently they're holding back billions of dollars collected on the G uh, by the GST on the carbon tax. All three talking points are demonstrably false. By the way, these Liberals love to repeat their talking points, but you know the one that we haven't heard in a long while? That we're supporting the middle class and those working hard to join it. I guess that's changed. But what is true is this tax, like so many others, is costing Canadians more money at a time when most cannot afford it. And despite its obvious failures, the Liberals continue to double down on this failed policy. Why? Because it is successful in one metric. And one metric only, the redistribution of wealth the destruction of the middle class to make more money for billionaires and liberal insiders and to force more everyday Canadians into total reliance on government. And this Bill C-50 will do the exact same thing. It's just the next step in the plan. 
The Liberals' so-called sustainable jobs plan will actually, actually kill 170,000 Canadian middle-class jobs, displace 450,000 middle-class workers, and risk the livelihoods of 2.7 million Canadians. In short, the Liberal government's just transition is anything but just, and their sustainable jobs plan is anything but sustainable. And when those jobs have gone, like during COVID, when everyone but the giant billionaires chains got shut down, where else will people turn but to the government?